Hello and uh, welcome to another one of the Bridge Burner tutorial series for Ultimate Doom Builder. Uh, today we are going to be talking about Sector Set Link, which is a fairly esoteric and not super well understood um, uh, tool, but very handy for uh, a few functions. Uh, chief among them is setting up complex lifts of multiple sectors. So Anori has tried to make a lift that um, contains more than one sector, knows that when you have your platform raise weight whatever function um it will only move one of the tag sectors it won't move the whole lot sector set link is the way to get around that so we'll go through a basic um, standard lift setup um, and then a 3d floor one uh, because this will also link your 3d floors together um, and stop them from separating breaking up if there's anything uh blocking the lift underneath it's for say uh, uh um which is uh can be very frustrating uh, if you don't know how to do this and you know you set up your nice fancy 3d floor lift Lost Soul gets underneath it and it stops some of the sectors from moving and they all they all break apart and your map's fucked. Right, so we'll start off with um, a fairly, we'll go for like an octagonal um, shape um, and we'll do some do some nice nice uh, sector trimming on it because um, that's often where I end up using it. So say you have a lift and I'll have a, a higher section over here. So we'll raise that up. Yeah, and we'll just do a nice little stair build. Distinct sectors. We'll use that to create some trims. So, raise that up. I like to have a little indent in the center of my lifts, like that. And we'll use some of the uh, nice um, support, uh, maybe metal, metal textures, where are they? These ones are, these ones are always good here. Yeah. like so and then we'll give that one a great texture something like that there you go nice lift nicely trimmed um and ready to go so with a lift uh it will the sector that moves the primary moving sector it needs to uh be touching the finishing height uh, sector so whether it's going up or down it needs to be adjoining the uh, the sector that you want it to go up towards it um, lifts raise themselves to four map units below the highest adjacent sector um, we'll go through how to get around that by using a separate control sector uh, as well but for this uh, this instance here we'll use this uh, sector we've already got um, raised up is backing onto here so this is our sector that's going to be moving this is what we're going to tag um, as the moving sector. So I'll give that a tag. And for this one, we will use an actor enters sector uh, as the activator uh, rather than a line. Um, so these are very handy tools, uh, particularly for things like lifts. You want a lift to just go up when a player walks onto it. You can use these um, to, to control that um, rather than using uh, individual lines which can be clunky in some situations you can set it to activate once you can make projectiles activate them monsters activate them players can't activate them uh, so they're very flexible very handy um, they've got a variety of uh, functions so enter sector even if you're in the air it'll still come up hits floor literally means that when it hits the floor all, all good stuff so i'll use it uh, i'll probably use it uh, hits floor it's probably better for the lift uh, that way if the player jumps off they're not going to activate it and then you just set up an action on it the same way that you do uh, a line. And we want a platform raise weight lower. We'll tag that 82. Make our lift fast because slow lifts are bad. And you see that is now tagged to it. So your event lines will show up from these. Um, oh, we've got a errant 3D floor that I need to get rid of. Hang on, we can do this like this. Bye bye. Um, which probably means we should just do, hang on, forgive me, I'll just do a relocate control sector that'll bring up any unused ones. Um, so we've got our moving sector, so this should, should take that back, there we go, no longer got a thread four track. So I'll demonstrate that should move up when we walk on that middle sector. Up she goes, perfect. Now, to demonstrate what happens when we 
take them all the same. I will brighten this up a touch. Watch them all not move. Yep. Yep. See, so just going to end up all sorts of broken. We don't want that. So, you've got your primary moving sector. That's got a tag. You give all the other sectors a different tag. 83. And this is where you set up the control. Select a line that is facing your moving sector, your primary moving sector. Facing in, you see what's got the little fin on the line. That's the front side of the line. That needs to be facing the sector that moves. Sector. Set link. Action 51. And it comes up with these uh, four arguments. Control sector tag, you don't need to worry about it in this instance. That is for if you set up with an ACS script, you can actually change your links mid-game. They are not permanent, not set at initialization. Um, you can alter them, which is useful if you want to put it in a script and you have different parts that link at different times. Control sector tag would be 82 in this case, but you do not need it if you are setting it up manually in the map. Uh, but if I was putting this in an open script, um, or in an activating script, I would enter 82 in the control sector tag argument, and that would set that as the control, control tag. In this case, don't need to do it. Target sector, that's everything that you want to move, all the ones we've tagged with, ta uh, tagged with 83. 83. Next one is which... Um, so there's, a, there's an argument, or a, a factor of this argument called specified surface. So which part's moving. So you can use this to link to ceilings, like if you've got a big ceiling structure that comes down and you don't want to tag everything individually um, with, um, with various uh, movement tags, you can use that to link to ceiling. It's just a good way. You can use this not just for this, but for any complex moving structure. Um, so if a ceiling is what you're using to move primarily, link it to the ceiling, but in a lift, you want to link to the floor. And then movement type, um, flag one link target sectors floor to the specified surface of the control sector so that links all the tagged sectors 83 their floors to the thing that's moving which is the floor of 82 you can link the ceiling and then you can also tell them to go in the opposite direction so if your pillars to uh, sections to open up like a mouth you can do that as well all of these tags can be used at the same time because uh, they are bit tags um, so they add up to a unique number um, so for this one we just need tag one uh, flag one that is the most common one you will use Nothing else needed there. You don't need any activation lines. And you'll see that it's now linked, pointing at all of those. Um, and this is pointing at that one. So this should theoretically now be a single sector. I think it was one. And there you have it. Nice and easy, just like that. So, say you wanted to have the lift freestanding. Now you don't have a reference point. So this is not necessarily specific to sector set link, um, but important to, now it's not moving, because it's got nothing to reference to its high point. If you want to do it like this, you need to create a control sector. Easiest way to set this up is to join the uh, your your tagged moving sector to one of those two control sectors. So that's your 82. And then this one just needs to have the same properties of the height that you want it to finish at. So we'll control, copy properties, control shift C, paste properties. Those now have the same properties. You could join them, uh, but that can lead to, to um, I, I don't generally do that. I just make sure it's got the same properties. Those are linked. Those are not, but that gives it the properties. This should now go to the same height as it was before. And stop. Oh, we've got a missing, uh, missing uh, texture there. So that, that's, uh, you know, setting up a control sector is nothing, nothing revolutionary, but that's how you do it with a sector set link. You join it to the linked sector. Right, let's set up something a little bit more tricky. We are going to set up a 3D floor control, uh, controlled uh, elevator. So we will edit what we've already made. We'll bring this up a touch and we'll create a little bit of a pit around the lift. Maybe 
maybe put some lava in there. And we'll create some little fins coming off the side. 3D floors and we might select them. There, we'll line you up with that point there, we'll tag that like that, and we'll give you a different texture, like that, like that. Uh, we'll split these out. Now I've done some plenty of 3D floor tutorials on how to use these features, so we're not going to go into them. Because uh, I like to make slopes, we're going to slope. Again, tutorials on the slope handles have been done and are on my YouTube page. And now we've got a nice, lovely, um, complicated lift. Um, and what I will do is show uh, off one of the more complex lifts that I've made uh, after this. Um, so these all need to have a different tag. You cannot tag them 83 because what that will do is it will only move the floor of that, which is actually the underside. So to do this, you split your sector, your uh, sector set link line. This one will have its own tags. So we will tag the 3D floors. Easiest way to tag 3D floors is in 3D mode. Select them, right click, give them a tag. Done. Uh, you cannot do them, well you can't, sorry, you can do them in 2D mode, but you have to go into the 3D floor uh, edit box and you can in input the tags if you've got in uh, edit control sector. Um, but for um, most purposes, it is definitely easiest to select them in 3D mode. Um, you can do things like uh, plate select and all that kind of stuff um, for selecting 3D floors. So those all have the tag of 88. So we'll give this one target 88. But the move type wants to be link target sector's floor and the ceiling. So both top and bottom of the 3D floor. And that's the important part. See that tag is now running over there to where the control sectors are. That should now move these with the whole edifice. Let's check and make sure I haven't fucked it up. And there we go. Whole thing moving as one. And the great thing about this is um, demonstrate we'll just put uh, bring this uh, in. Cannot linked sectors cannot break apart. Um, so anyone who's worked with three D floors has done that thing where an actor gets stuck underneath, and I fall off the off the little ledge. That's going to stop it. So if that was not linked, this would break up. This would separate. Um, uh, so that's the other strength of sector set link. The links will never break. Um, the whole thing might stop and might, uh, if you're doing like um, moving floors. Um, but if there's a blocking actor, it will just stop. Um, yeah, so that's that's the that's the basics. Like I said, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, yes, you can link sectors to themselves um, as well. Uh, but um, that is that is the gist of it. Um, uh, yeah, so irrespective of how you're activating your lift, um, whether you're using a switch, an actor into sector, walkover lines, anything like that, um, you know, complex script activations, uh, it will all work. Uh, that, that is independent of your sector set link. Make sure you, yeah, the link is the important part. Um, make sure it's all joined nicely um, and uh, you know, pretty easy to, to, to troubleshoot, to be honest. Um, if it's not working, check your tags. Check your move type, check your what surface you've specified. Um, you know, easy to mess up uh, in terms of like accidentally selecting the wrong one, but equally easy to double check. Um, I think the main one that people uh, get confused by is the move type um, in conjunction with the specified surface. So important to get that right and then get your move type right. Um, but you know, there's a limit to how many different 
choices there are in that in that subset of options um, um, and like I said with the control sector tag that is for using if you're using an ACS script to activate it um, uh, which you can change mid game um, again this in this case 82 would be the control sector tag if this was set up via a script now I will just show a slightly more complex setup um, from one of the age of hell maps um, remember my way around my files this. this one takes a while to load because it's big um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Um, but um, yeah, the robot you can see the robustness of that of this function uh, used here. Very, very many many sectored edifice. Um, You can do it. Probably should have had this map already open. But what tutorial is not complete without a little bit of unexpected waiting? Right. So we've got this structure here. Lots of sectors, lots of 3D floors. Got a imp on it. Um, nice pentagram, my snow. Pentaflake uh, in the middle. So we've got a switch that activates it, comes down, and then a activation from walking on that middle sector. Up she goes. Stops there. And drops down there. So it's all set up with a sector set link. Um, very pretty much identically to how it was done uh, that I showed you in the tutorial. Uh, it's obviously just a lot more in terms of detailing. Um, uh, we've got some special dynamic lights that move with the lift. Um, but same concept, we've got a pit in the bottom um, that the lift sinks into. And where did I put my control sector? Over here, same thing. So sector set link there going to the uh, non 3D floors and then that one running off to the 3D floor control sectors. Uh, again, I would have just tagged it via um, 3D mode. Paint select, paint select, paint select. Like so. Easy, easy, easy. Um, yeah, uh, that is it for sector set link. Um, like uh, usual, feel free to uh, message me um, uh, on YouTube uh, when I post the video. Uh, DM me on Discord, Twitch, Twitter, wherever if you have any further questions. And if there's anything uh, that warrants a follow-up tutorial, I will do that. Um, but uh, happy to answer any questions that you all might have. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this uh, was helpful. And we will see you next time.